What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Waiver Wire Queen, and today's episode, I'll be re-ranking my top 10 tight ends in fantasy football. These are the first 10 tight ends that should be going off the board in your fantasy football draft. And if you have any of these guys, you should be confident that at the tight end position, you will produce a good amount of points. And keep in mind, you do not always have to go for the top five tight ends because if you do, that means you are drafting those guys early. There is some great value from six to 10, and then there is some late sleepers. Let's talk about these tight ends. Coming in at number 10, I have Pat Freamuth with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll be honest with you, early on, before the NFL draft, I did not have Pat in my top 10 rankings. I actually had Mike Gusecki here with the Miami Dolphins. I went back and forth about it, and I was like, I'm not ready to put Pat in there. Well, now, post-NFL draft, preseason and training camp, I am ready to put Pat in my top 10 for several reasons. One being, I don't know what the hell Miami is planning on doing with um, Mike Gusecki. He may end up finishing in the top 10, but from everything that I've been hearing and what's going on doesn't really feel like it. With Pat, he always has had that potential for me to be in the top 10. A few factors, um, Mitch and Kenny, I don't necessarily trust either one of them at the starting quarterback position. However, they both will utilize um, Pat as a security blanket, especially Kenny Pickett as a rookie, even though I if he is the starter, which I do expect Mitch to be, Kenny um, will have some growing pains. They both may. However, they can utilize um, Pat. Last year, um, you notice later on in the season, the Steelers utilized Pat a bit more in the red zone, which is why he had seven touchdowns. He had a, a solid rookie season. He came on late, 60 receptions, 497 um, yards. It was a solid season. I am expecting Pat to be within that 7 to 10 touchdown range and most likely increase his um, yardage to um, 600. So he's going to be very consistent, and I do expect them to utilize him a bit more because, again, Mitch, he's just who he is. He's only going to be the starter for so long, and then at some point, whether it's this year or next year, Kenny Pickett is going to get his opportunity, and he's going to be able to utilize Pat. Coming in at number nine, we have TJ Hawkinson with the Detroit Lions. What up, though? What's going on, Motown? I am simply no longer a big fan of TJ Hawkinson. We always want to put him in that six to eight range, but he hasn't truly performed like a tight end worthy of the six to eight range, let alone early on people last season were expecting him to have this great season and it just didn't happen. One of the factors is he has Jared Goff as his starting quarterback and Goff is only going to do so much. His days of producing a really good wide receiver tight end is pretty much past. That was back for a season and a half with the Rams. It's not going to happen again. However, TJ Hawkinson still has some great upside because who the hell else are they going to throw the football to? Now, I do believe that um, Armand Ross St. Brown is going to be involved. We know Williams is um, not ready yet. So Hawkinson should be involved. And if golf is struggling, then you know what you do? You go to your tight end. If you're struggling to get the ball down the field, Get the damn ball to your tight end. I was expecting a lot of that last year, but it really just didn't go too well. And then injuries. And it was a big disappointment in 2021. And Hawkinson underachieved, appeared in only 21 game, um, 12 games, 61 receptions, 583 yards, and four touchdowns. I need more. If I'm going to move um Hawkinson back up in that six to eight range, or six to seven range, I will say I need. 650, 700 yards, and I need seven touchdowns. I just need a little bit more. Can he become elite? He has the potential, but I don't see him going over 
the hump. I don't see him getting there, which is why I moved him back in my rankings. He was ranked a slight bit higher in my previous rankings. And you can look at those previous rankings I did early on um, this year. However, now he's in a nice spot. He's going to have several opportunities, but they have added some weapons. They've added DJ Chark, and, you know, they drafted um, the – talented wide receiver um, Williams and I expect Williams to end up being the best wide receiver out of that group they also have Josh Reynolds and you know you have um, Armand who had a um, amazing season last year just brilliant but again I don't trust Hawkinson and I don't trust golf we want him to be that guy but there's always something that's preventing him from getting over the hump Coming in at number eight, we have Zach Ertz with the Cardinals. I'm sorry, but most people were like, oh, the Eagles are trading him. It's like, eh, so just a throwaway trade. He's not going to do anything. And he has been solid. Career is not over. People thought his career was dead when he was traded to the Cardinals. It was like, oh, he's always hurt. He's out. It's over. No, he was able to have a really good season. For the most part, he's been healthy. He appeared in 17 games last season for um, the Cardinals, 74 receptions, 763 yards, five touchdowns. Did anyone expect him to produce that? No, and he did. So you got to start looking at him like, okay, he's solid. Yes, very solid. And one of the other reasons I have him ranked in my top 10 is because, one, DeAndre Hopkins is going to miss some time um, due to a suspension. So he has that going for him. So he's going to take some of those targets. Somebody has to get the ball. I know they traded for Hollywood Brown. However, Zach Ertz is going to be involved, and I want to see them get him the ball. He has been – solid for the Cardinals, and he should be drafted as the tight end seven or eight, but I got him at eight right now. Coming in at number seven, we have Dallas Goddard with the Eagles. Really like him. Not as high on the quarterback. I know they're saying um, Jalen Hurts is um, – he worked hard on his game this offseason. I really do hope he he's able to get a little bit more consistent. And what I mean, consistency, I need to see him to be a little bit more accurate because he has a lot of weapons around him now. If he doesn't succeed, then it would be because he just isn't capable of being a starting quarterback because they surrounded him with weapons. You have A.J. Brown. You have Dallas Goddard. You have um, several running backs. You got Boston Scott. You have um, Kenneth Gainwell. You have Miles Sanders. You have a whole lot of running backs. They just claim Trey Sermon, you know, 49ers waves him. So they, he has a lot, and then he has um, – Devontae Smith, you have all of the weapons. The thing is, can he put it together and be consistent and accurate? Because Dallas Garter is super talented, very athletic at the tight end position. He had a hell of a season. Career highs and um, yardage, 830 yards. That's brilliant, considering there were times the Eagles passing game looked atrocious. I was like, oh, I was looking like, I don't even want to look because it looked bad. But considering how they struggled at times, and he was able to produce 830 yards for a touchdown, 56 receptions, good season. Just imagine if Hurts can be a bit more consistent. You're going to have a lot of Dallas Goddard. And, and, and I feel like at the quarterback position, if you are struggling to, to get the ball down the field and be accurate, get the damn ball to your tight end. Do some short passes to your tight end. And Dallas Garter is capable of catching the ball. You can catch the football. Health issues slightly, but I do not see any reason why Dallas Garter won't produce similar stats. He may take a slight little hit because they um, traded for A.J. Brown, but I still believe that the Eagles are going to look very good this season in the NFC East, and Dallas Garter is going to be a top 10 tight end. Coming in at number six, may even finish higher. Del Dalton Schultz with the Cowboys. Dak Prescott is his quarterback. Dak is very underrated in fantasy football. Um, he should be the number two target until Michael Gallup returns from injury. Don't know when he's going to come back. Schultz had a career year in 2021. It was just amazing. 808 yards, eight touchdowns. What more can you ask for from a tight end that, you know, he 
came in there and took over for Jarwin because Jarwin was hurt. Jarwin was just a bit injury prone. Came in there and just took the job. Been consistent ever since. He was ranked number three last season out of tight ends. Let's see what happens. Let's see if uh, um, Darren Waller can remain healthy. If Darren Waller can remain healthy and be involved, then maybe those rankings will from last season will slightly change. I do believe Dalton Schultz will definitely be in the mix. He may even sneak in the top five, depending on how some things go with the top five tight ends. But 2021 was great for Dalton Schultz. And again, he's going to take away – um, some of those target, he's going to take on some of those targets that um, are out there due to uh, Michael Gallup's injury. Okay. Honestly, we don't know when Gallup is going to come back and maybe Dalton Schultz will hit a thousand yards this season. It's not impossible considering he hit what over 800 yards and you had CD lamb, Gallup, Cooper all in the mix at time. So it's not impossible. So um, Dolson Schultz is a great pick at the tight end position. I I proposed this question to um, NFL fans. I'm like, who do you rather have? And this is that NFC East question. Do you want Dolson Schultz or Dallas Goddard? And, you know, it's a fight. You got your Eagle fans and your Cowboys, Cowboy fans fighting. But both tight ends are great. To have, I think Dalton Schultz, I'll give him the slight edge because I do believe there are less miles to feed in the passing game right now to start the season for the Cowboys. And Dalton Schultz is going to benefit from the absence of players like Michael Gallup and, you know, Amari Cooper was traded. So, woo, Dalton Schultz is, is due for an even better season than 2021. Coming in at number five, we're getting into the elite tight ends in the NFL. Darren Waller is still definitely in my top five. I've gone back and forth with should I move um, Dalton Schultz in there and move Darren Waller out? Well, no, I'm going to leave Darren Waller right in my top five. He was um, ranked third to start my 2020 season last year, but some things occurred. Not a good season, injuries. He's at number five, and there have been some other guys who have stepped up and, you know, jumped him. He's still a good tight end, but the question is, can he remain healthy, and is he going to be the favorite target of um, Derek Carr now that Devontae Adams is on the team? Derek Carr does not know, doesn't no longer have to lean on Darren Waller anymore because he has – Devontae Adams. So you may see some of um, the targets that Darren Waller would normally receive from Derek Carr slightly go over to Devontae Adams. So I do expect um, Waller to be good, but I do expect him to slightly take a hit because Devontae Adams is in the building. He's the number one. I do believe Devontae Adams will end up being Derek Carr's favorite target. Um, Waller's 2021 season was injury plagued. It's not a, a lot to talk about. It just wasn't, it, it just wasn't good. Right? It, it's not even worth mentioning, but again, the Raiders have more offensive weapons. And when you start talking about Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, um, you got Bolden, you have Zamir White, you have Josh Jacobs, you have a lot of weapons and a lot of mouths to feed. And again, that may slightly take away from Darren Waller's stats, which is why I have him ranked fifth right now. But again, I did say that I wouldn't be surprised if Dalton Schultz was to slide on back in there and, and Waller was to slide out of the top five because of a few factors like the um, amount of um, talent they have on the offensive side of the ball. And can he still remain as one of the elite tight ends? Remember, he's only performed at that elite level, what, the last, well, not the last, I don't want to say the last two years, but 19 and 20. So um, something to keep in mind. Coming in at number four, we have George Kittle with the 49ers. Quarterback is now Trey Lance. Woo-wee! Once Trey Lance gets into his rhythm, it's going to be okay. There may be some growing pains early on, but a young quarterback can utilize the tight end as a security blanket. Just do it. Um, Trey Lance is going to be looking to throw the ball down the field a lot. 
But again, I do expect there to be some growing pains and he can utilize Kittle when he is struggling because there are going to be times when he does struggle. This is officially his first season. So I'm not expecting it to just be uh, the greatest thing ever. It may end up being a very good season at the end of the year, but there are going to be times where it's just rough and you rely on George Kittle. He is one of the best tight ends in the NFL especially when he's healthy. But a lot of times that health is very inconsistent, but he is still able to produce. 2021 was another good year, even though, you know, a few in nicks and injuries here and there, but he still was able to produce a good season. 910 yards, um, six touchdowns, which was a career high. You know, he can still produce 900 yards, six touchdowns easily. Just imagine if he plays every game and he's, 100% healthy, easily may go over 1,000 because he's just that good. And again, as a young quarterback, you tend to rely on your tight end. And he is a very good, a damn good tight end to rely on, okay? And again, 2022 is going to be more of the same. I don't care who is the quarterback for the 49ers. Kittle was able to produce, and he's always been able to produce with inconsistencies at the quarterback position for the 49ers. So if Trey Lance can be consistent and be good like the 49ers envisioned because they traded up and gave away a lot of assets for him because they believe in him, Kittle's just going to be all right. It's going to be great, which is why he's in my top five. Coming in at number three, the talented Kyle Pitts with the Falcons. His quarterback is Marcus Mariota, or maybe later on in the season, Desmond Ritter. Right now, it's Marcus Mariota. Not high on Marcus Mariota. <sighs> That's the, the thing that kind of, it's like, ooh, I don't know about the whole Marcus Mariota thing, but again, Mar Marcus Mariota is unable to throw the ball down the field. Just get the damn ball to Kyle Pitts. You got Kyle Pitts. He's not the only guy anymore because we don't know what happened with Calvin Ridley last season, and it was just the Kyle Pitts show and a lot of Patterson. Now you have Drake London in the mix as well. But, again, if Marcus Mariota isn't capable of getting the ball down the field, just get the ball to Kyle Pitts. Rookie tight end, produce a 1,000-yard season. That is amazing and rare. It's it's not unheard of because it's happened in the past, but it's not something that tends to happen. And when you have something like that happen, you know, think about it. Kyle Pitts drafted in the top four of the NFL draft. Was that expected? Yes. And when you're drafting a tight end that early, you know, the tight end is elite. He's a franchise generational tight end. You don't find them often. You can get some solid tight ends, but you don't find the Kyle Pitts types. Not a lot of tight ends are drafted into the NFL and already in the top three. I don't even have to say top five. In the top three. He has that talent. He is amazing. If you can get him in your fantasy dynasty league, whoo, you have a tight end for years to come, a building block and your tight end position is stable, okay? So, woo, if you have Kyle Pitts, you're doing a lot, okay? 1,026 yards as a rookie is simply amazing. Over 1,000 yards, again, is just impressive. But you all know, they say, what well, the tight end position as a rookie is some growing pains, it's some issues, and really get in there a lot. My brother and, well, both of my brothers, they made a bet on whether Kyle Pitts was going to go over 1,000 yards as a tight end, as a rookie, and you know, that bet, we all know how that went. Yes, he went over a thousand yards. So that was that ongoing situation with them because it's like, no, it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. They bet on it. And you know, brother over on this side lost the bet. This one won. And we all know Kyle Pitts is simply amazing. I do believe he'll have an even better season because, again, they don't have a lot to work with in, in the passing game. You got Drake London and you have Pitts. That's it. I don't trust anyone else. I do like uh, Brian Edwards slightly, but again, he's not going to be taking a lot of targets away from Kyle Pitts and Drake London. The biggest concern for me is can Marcus Mario to get him the football? Okay, that's what we should be concerned about. I do believe he can, and he will. And Kyle Pitts is another season or two away from being number one one at the tight end position. Coming in at number two, Mark Andrews with the Ravens. He 
ranked number one out of all tight ends in 2021, had a career year. It was so amazing. Career highs across the board. Check every box. Career, career, career. Okay. This was the first season over a thousand yards. Um, 361 yards at a tight end position. Come on now. That's that ain't normal. Unless you're Travis Kelce, but Mark Andrews did it. He may exceed that this season because the Ravens traded away Hollywood Brown. They did not draft any wide receivers in the draft, which is crazy. They did bring in Isaiah Likely at the tight end position. He's going to be lined up all over the field, but he's not going to take away from Mark Andrews. Make sure in your dynasty league, draft Isaiah Likely. May end up as the best tight end in this draft. Draft Isaiah Likely. Mark Andrews is simply amazing. Y'all know when I start singing, y'all know y'all need to pay attention to the singing because that means... Mark Andrews is a beast. And again, he may finish as the um, tight end one because the Ravens just said, we're not investing in the wide receiver position. Okay. Bateman, it's your world now. So let's see what Bateman can do. He's next up in line. He's a great route runner. Let's see what he can do. I don't think He's going to take any targets away from Mark Andrews. That is Lamar Jackson's favorite target. It's going to always be his favorite target. And Mark Andrews is going to eat. He's going to have another exceptional season. If he was to produce 1,300, 1,400 yards, I would not be surprised because he's the most reliable player in the passing game. For Lamar Jackson, as a receiver, he is just it. There isn't anybody else, okay? Again, Bateman may play well this upcoming season, but who else you throwing the ball to? Got Mark Andrews, the tight end. Mark Andrews, that's it. Everybody else will, you know, come in second or last. It's a Mark Andrews world. It's Mark Andrews world. If you're with the Ravens, if you have Mark Andrews, you have a great tight end. And if you're playing against Mark Andrews, you have a whole lot of damn problems. I am not looking forward to playing against him. However, this is impressive. Last season was impressive to see. And again, I do envision him doing more of that in 2022 because again, he's the favorite target and they don't have anyone else. They haven't replaced Hollywood. Hollywood was having a very good year. They haven't replaced him. They just believe that the next man up, Bateman, will come in and and play very well. But again, with Jackson, it's going to be those short passes to Mark Andrews. No one's stopping that. And it's going to continue on this year. So Mark Andrews realistically may finish as the wide receiver one. Coming in at number one, my fave, Travis Kelce with the Chiefs. Quarterback is um, Patrick Mahomes, throwing side passes, fancy with it, behind the back, all that good stuff. He has ranked number one five out of, of, out of the last six years, which is impressive. Um, the Chiefs traded Tyreek Hill. They have some other weapons, so they, they've added more weapons, just not – on the level of Tyreek Hill, but these guys should be able to help. You have MVS, Sky Moore, who's a rookie. Hardman, who I don't believe is going to be a major factor because he just hasn't taken off. I don't expect all of a sudden, now you're going to take off. You've had several opportunities and haven't produced at the level that most people were hoping for. And then they have Juju, who I think will have a really good season this year. He's not the number one. There's simply not a number one. To me, like um, Green Bay's coach came out and said it's a committee. To me, this is a committee, too, because you don't have a number one wide receiver, but you have a few wide receivers who are serviceable in their role. They know their um, role. They know their strengths and what they can do. MBS down down the field, Miko, um, Miko Hardman, sometimes down the field, Sky Moore, a little bit of everything, Juju, short passes. Oh, I had all it together. You have one great wide receiver. So that's why I feel like this is going to be more of a committee. But I do believe at the end of the day, Juju will lead this group in yards, okay? And he's number one, right? 
Kels, just simply number one, I do believe um, Mahomes will lean on him a bit more early on because although they've had um, training camp, OTAs, and a lot of time together, it's still not what Kels and um, Mahomes have. So I do believe he will rely on Kels a whole hell of a lot. And that's what it is. Y'all leave some comments and let me know what you think of my top 10 tight ends going into week one of the 2022 fantasy football season. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of great content, which will help you throughout the season so you can achieve your ultimate goal. And you know what your goal should be. If you're not trying to win your fantasy football league, then what are you doing? Because it's all about winning and that should be your goal. Your goal should be to make it to the playoffs and compete and win a championship. I'll see you guys later on this week. We have a great episode coming out, which will give you some early waiver wire ads. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for listening to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast.